This is my husband, Charles, and you're watching another edition of Samber's Eating Show. In today's video, we're going to be kind of covering a, might be a sensitive topic for a lot of people, so I will admit they're a trigger warning if you're, you know, triggered by discussions of eating disorders and whatnot, I suggest you click off the video right now because this video topic today is going to cover that and my journey through um, multiple relapses and almost death. So I would recommend you click off now if you're, you know, triggered by those kinds of things. Indeed. If any discussion of eating disorder or kind of the consequences thereof, if it triggers you, we understand. Yeah. You need to find another video. Well, in today's video, though, we are enjoying some homemade Mexican food by me. At least most of it is anyway. <clears throat> I made some vegetable enchiladas with poblano sauce, and these burritos are filled with refried beans, sour cream, cheese, and Spanish rice. And I made them myself too. And we also have refried beans, rice on the side here, and chips here, but you can't really see it too well. And I didn't make any of it. <laughs> saying either it's homemade or she made, or some of it's store bought. <laughs> right. Now, before we get started, be sure to click the red button down below mm -hmm. to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to receive notifications. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Let's go and get started. I want to first start off by saying that the my bouts of anorexia that I've had is definitely hasn't been very easy. My first one started when I was about 17 and it lasted for about a month. But the main thing I did during that time was restrict calories. Good. And, um, you know, the main thing with my eating disorders always has been kind of restriction of calories. I never have been bulimic, you know, throwing up my food and stuff like that. So it's always just been restrictions, some sort of form of control that I had to make myself feel better. But anyway, the first bout that I had, I got down to a pretty well weight at 104 pounds, but my family caught this early on and they stopped me and I just, you know, I actually was able to correct it myself the first time and, you know, I got back up to the 120 range, which I was at when I started dieting, um, within a month. So it only lasted for about a month. The next but, one. But the next one started immediately after that. Um, it was actually a pretty slow decline over the course of that year until like the middle of that year. It was around Mother's Day. I had some issues with my mom during that time and it made me worry about her a lot. And I just started cutting down my food even more. Caloric intake was in half. <laughs> and I kind of just started lying about how much food I was eating and hiding. Um, like, I would make people think that I was eating more than when I was. So that wasn't very easy in itself. And, you know, I was able to keep it at bay for a little while, but it started to definitely show through. Um, I think over the course of later that year, I ended up losing another 30 pounds. And... By the time my dad was finally able to get me to a hospital, he had a hard time because his insurance didn't really cover many places because of my age. But luckily they found a place in Birmingham and I stayed there for a couple of weeks. And I managed to gain about 10 pounds back and I was down to about 84 pounds when I was admitted to the hospital. But, so I stayed there for two weeks. And um, I was able to, you know, stick with the meal plan they gave me. And then we were trying to find a place that I could go to, though, like a residential center inpatient, because that's where they wanted me to go after that. And my dad's insurance gave us a hard time again because of that. But we finally found a place in Utah called Center for Change. And um, I actually flew out there by myself. And I stayed there for about a month, and um, I managed to gain my way back and recover. And for the next few years, she was in pretty good shape, from my mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I was still counting calories later on, but I was eating a healthy amount. 
Um, when I first left the center, of course, their philosophy is intuitive eating. Like, you eat so you feel full. But, unfortunately, I didn't get taught that philosophy in time because by the time I had just recovered the insurance, I had, you know, decided to quit covering. Of course. So, my dad had to fly out to pick me up and then bring me back home. Then she met me. Yep. And it is actually probably definitely one of the happiest moments in my life. Like, I still had a good relation with food, although I could count calories, but, you know, we enjoyed going out to eat at different places and stuff, and I didn't feel guilty about it. And we had a really good time. But, you know, then I fell pregnant about eight months into our relationship. And unfortunately, this is where the third bout sort of started. Although it didn't get really bad actually until after he was born. But during the entire pregnancy, I was still counting calories to the very minimum, even or even sometimes below what my midwife was recommending. Indeed, like, I should bet. For some reason, she was incredibly concerned about you know, gaining weight, you know, you know, during her pregnancy. So she deliberately would restrict calories you know, so that she would avoid gaining weight. She succeeded. Well, I still did gain weight. I only gained like 15 pounds, though. And I still think back to this day and like, you know, think to myself, how could I have done that? I was endangering my own life as well as Evan's. And... I feel really stupid about that. I shouldn't have let it control me like it then, but it was just really, you know, something I couldn't take out of my mind. So, but luckily, Evan was born a healthy baby. He was seven pounds exactly. But the only bad part about it was is that I think within six weeks after he birthed, him, I was actually four pounds below my weight when I found I was pregnant with him. I was about 120, and six weeks later I was 116. The reason for that being was because, but I was exclusively breastfeeding him, and that was making me lose weight, the breastfeeding part. Because when you breastfeed, it burns a lot of calories, and you know, unfortunately I lost weight a lot quicker because of that. And that's when the you know, nightmare truly began. Because mm. due to her malnutrition, she actually had to, started to have problems, you know, digesting food. I developed, yeah, I developed a condition called gastroparesis, which is basically delayed stomach emptying. I started um, having food stay in my stomach for several hours, and we didn't know what it was at first, what was causing that problem. But during that time, I actually cut my calories even more, thinking that, oh, hey, that would solve it. No, it didn't. Indeed, because... After all, the problem was malnutrition. So the less she ate, the more malnourished she got, which made the problem worse. Mm -hmm. And then there was um, that one gift we received. I received a exercise bike from a family member, and I started obsessively using it for hours and hours on end, neglecting my motherly duties, and I lost weight even quicker. Indeed, she'd pretty much do it the entire time I was away from at work. Like, I think it was like eight hours a day. Mm hmm. Possibly more. Um, and she rapidly become, became basically a zombie. Mm hmm. So. And meanwhile, her intake continued to drop. I was probably down. Be, you know, at my worst point, to about 500 calories a day. And all I would typically eat was maybe like, what was it, bagels and cream cheese or something like that? That part I honestly don't remember because... Well, it was waffles with cream cheese. I remember that. But I remember I ate like waffles and cream cheese, but that would be like really the only thing I would eat in a day. And probably not that many, given, you know, 500 calories. Yeah, like two waffles and um, a few teaspoons and cream cheese. But even during that time, too, I was still 
you know, breastfeeding. <laughs> I don't know how I was still able to produce milk with how little calories I was eating, but I guess I was. And um, I continued to lose weight quicker. And I think it was like, it took two years with this abuse to get down to this point. And even during that time, I also got a stomach tube fit in about like, I think it was like a year after it started. You guys can see that <laughs> for quite a long time. And the reason they gave me that was because they would think that, you know, it was a way to get extra nutrition in me. So I actually had a GJ tube. It was like part of it going in my stomach and then my intestines. And part of the problem was, I'll say there were significant arguments among the family over how best to care for her. The stomach tube ended up in agreed amount as a compromise option, but that actually made matters worse. Yeah, I won't go into like detail about it, but I found ways to abuse the tube and it made me a lot sicker. So it was not really a good idea to have added that to everything else. And before it was all said and done, it was just like, you know, I know you guys were really worried about me and I was losing weight, but we literally had like no idea how much I got down to until I was waiting at the hospital that one day in November. I was just... You know, it was one morning, I think, at church service, when I went with your, you know, dad and, and so forth. Excuse me. And I was just complaining that I was feeling, like, lightheaded and dizzy and such. And, um, you know, you sent me to the hospital. And, um, I got down to 74 pounds. So. And that was in the first time at the hospital. Like, gosh, how many times did we have you go to the hospital? Mm-hmm. Four, five. Maybe six times. Quite a few times. We tried taking her to an eating disorder you know, clinic, a couple of them, but there were always disagreements and she was very eager to avoid eating. Yeah, the main thing I think that I had problems with there is, you know, right besides that, also they were giving me food that wasn't really like easy for me to digest, like fibers and salads and stuff, and I still have some issues to that to this day. We're not as bad at all, but <clears throat> due to gastroparesis, like, they tell you to always avoid foods that are high in fiber, but, you know, they couldn't set me up with that because we didn't know I had gastroparesis at that time. And by the time I found out, like, basically you were flatly refusing to go to any kind of, you know, mental care and how should I put this? We didn't have necess like the necessary level of, you know, control to act to actually like force her. Yeah, because I was an adult, they couldn't force me unless maybe they signed like some sort of guardianship over me or something. I mean, some people can do that, like you know, power of attorney and whatnot. If someone's incapable of making decisions for themselves, then you know you can make the decisions for them. Okay, she got down to about 74 pounds, and she went to the hospital more time in you know, Birmingham. Yeah, that actually transferred me there from the hospital here in um, Tennessee, because I actually was seeing a nutritionist at the time. His name was Dr. Olson, and he was, you know, in Birmingham in the hospital, so they just decided to transfer me there, and they immediately started me on TPN, which is total parent neutral nutrition something like that <laughs> but it's basically something that goes in your veins bypasses your digestion and feeds your heart but it's a way to feed you but they were using that to try to get my nutrients back up so they could get me to eat again but this is where the big thing comes in within i think it's like two three days or, or so after i was in the hospital i ended up with sepsis and i would say it's almost died from that she was put into a chemically induced coma for, what, two, three weeks? Almost two and a half weeks. Oh, no, oh, actually, almost two weeks. A week and a half. It was, like, in the middle of November when I finally woke up. I was like, what happened at the time? But during that time, I was battling fevers, chills, rapid heart rate. I had blood coming out of me. Um, 
<laughs> but they had to put me in a loose coma to get my body to rest. But even during that time, my, my memories of what my dad told me is that my vital signs were going down and it honestly didn't look like I was going to make it. I had multiple infections, anemia, E. coli, you name it. So my lungs were filling with fluid. I don't know how I made it. So they started giving me a lot of antibiotics. They were feeding me through my stomach tube or, and even through my nose because and I was tolerating it well. And um, I just like remember one thing seeing when I was in a coma was my just a bunch of like white clouds I told you about this and um, hearing a voice that sounded like my grandma my grandma was really close to and she was telling me that it wasn't my time to go yet so I remember my dad said he brought a chaplain in there sometimes like you know one of those church people works at the hospital and they prayed over me and you know maybe I, I have a feeling that God gave me a second chance is it saying, you know, my husband doesn't need to be without his wife. Evan doesn't need to be without his mother. You know, I, there's a lot more that I could do for this world, but it wasn't my time to go yet. And I'm very grateful to this day to be here and be doing what I'm doing for everybody, even after almost dying. But that's not the end of the story. No, it actually isn't. After she got the chemically induced coma, I basically gave her an ultimatum because I'd been there with her throughout the whole thing. I'd done everything in my power. He was about ready to give up on me. There was actually one time during that you were threatening to divorce me and I couldn't blame you for that, honestly. Indeed. Because I might have not changed, but that opened my eyes. It's like, I, I can't have him leaving me. I need him here by my side. So I need to do something to change that. And honestly, it was basically a last ditch you know, effort. Like, I basically said, gave her some conditions or I was gone. So I spent the next four to five months. Um, I think it was like, actually maybe like five six months at my dad's house and he took care of me and I recovered pretty quickly and like I said during this time too um I ended up getting my stomach tube out okay. and uh, I actually tried going to another eating clinic for about a few weeks but I just felt like I could actually just do this myself I just felt so motivated and said I you know I can recover I don't need these people's help and then so I went you know, back to my dad's house and watching ASMR, I started doing that time and having the love and support of my family, I recovered and I gained back all my weight within a few months time and I had a better relationship with food and it's just like, it, it's gotten better over the years. You know? Indeed, like, she still wasn't fully recovered at that point. In fact, I'm not sure if like, we can fully say that she's recovered, recovered, you know, now, but... Like, when you have an eating disorder, I won't know you, it's not something you could ever truly fully recover from. It's always going to be there with you. But, you know, there's deep inside, you're going to have to tell yourself not to listen to what it says. Because, really, it's just going to make things a lot worse for you. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there struggling these days, but you just got to realize that you're stronger than that. You can overcome. Just don't listen to what it tells you. And... That thing is insidious. Like, mm -hmm. let's talk, uh, remember, the story doesn't end there. There was one more bat that I had. Although it wasn't quite as bad, but... We caught it early. We caught time. it early. About six months after I got back home, I was uh, kind of pleading and pleading with Chuck, could I get a gym membership? And he was very reluctant at first, but he agreed. It's like, you know, as long as I have the option to cancel at any time you can go ahead and do it but it wasn't too long after i started going that eventually i just started abusing it and instead of doing mainly like strength training and such i was doing full cardio i got the whole time i was on the treadmill indeed and she told me that she was going to boost her calorie but no she was i was never eating any more calories than what i had been so 
I ended up getting back down to, what was it, 102 pounds or something? Something like that. Mm-hmm. Within about six months. I also mm-hmm. was near about one or two pounds a month. It was pretty slow, but still, it was not good. Mm-hmm. But, um, no, likely, my mom and him caught it early, and um, I reversed it. And ever since then, I've been doing pretty good. Like, I, mo- I still do exercise using a bike and such, but I moderate it. And I don't overdo it. And I have a much better relationship with food now. Like, I'm not scared to eat. I know I eat a lot of junk food, fast food, whatever. But back in the day, I used to eat a lot of protein bars or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day. Like, or I was yellow shakes. Right. <laughs> or um, those protein shakes. Like, I wasn't really expanding my, you know, choices that much. But now, thanks to ASMR and... What not? I'm just, I'm a happier place. Indeed. Like, you see one of our biggest arguments as a couple was that she would absolutely refuse to eat out with, mm-hmm. you know, well, not as a couple, but one you know, sore spot, I should say, was she'd absolutely refuse to eat out. She wouldn't go to a restaurant. She wouldn't, you know, like, if we stopped for, like, you know, KFC, she refused to eat anything. Right, because I was just really scared about that. I was scared about, like, oh, there's no nutrition or anything, or I was scared about the sodium levels and whatnot, and, or the sugar, because um, I used to be very limited on that, and I just wouldn't want to go out and eat anywhere. <clears throat> so, but now, it's just like, you know. She had to have absolute control. Yeah. yeah. And one of my you know, proudest moments was when she started, you know, like eating you know, fast food for these videos because yeah no it's not the healthiest food around but the fact that she could eat something unhealthy rather than be absolutely terrified at the thought of you know anything that had, like actual sugar in it or you know like fat <laughs> yeah was a you know, big sign of improvement like, I would always use my meal planner to track the amount of sugars and stuff that I ate and the fat, and I would always be afraid of going over a specific number, but now it's just like, you know, well, you know, if I go over a little bit that day, I can always go under the next day or something, or maybe I'm just not obsessively worrying about it. Like, there's a lot of days that I might eat 3,000 milligrams of sodium, but, you know, I really don't care because, I mean, it's not going to be detrimental, and as long as I eat healthy the rest of the day, um, you know, that just kind of ensures everything's going to be going smoothly. I want to admit that the biggest reason I started doing ASMR was not only because I recovered from my eating disorder thanks to that, but also I just got inspired by certain people like Sassy Snacks. She is my biggest inspiration and she is actually probably one of the first people on YouTube to do like ASMR with eating and such. And whenever I watched her, I felt like I had somebody there with me, even though I wasn't really able to talk to her. And I felt like someone was there having a conversation. It just kind of helped me forget about everything. And I'm just like saying, you know, she can eat all her food and you know, I can too. And, you know, and also I would often eat meals with my grandpa and my dad too. And just having somebody there kind of just encouraged me to finish eating no matter how full I felt. Cause I know I had to push on to get back to my family and get back to Evan, but and just the biggest inspiration, you know, just during ASMR was that. And I'm really glad that I did. It's just helped improve my life so much. I have met a lot of wonderful people. And I know a lot of wonderful people um, who watch my content as well. Like, it, it feels like a second family. And I honestly wouldn't be where I am today without you guys and without everyone in the community. So, it's just all the love and support is overwhelming at times. And I truly appreciate you guys for that. Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons she you know, likes to make so many comments supporting people. I know, like, I, I go on um, a lot of people's videos and just leave something nice for them. I mean, you know, it might not be the, the best thing, but um, I just want to try to support them and encourage them to keep making content because they truly, you know, deserve to know that, hey, hey it's really good, it's satisfying, and I can't wait to see the next video. It's just... I want to you know, encourage them to you know, not give up on their dreams and what they're wanting to do. But also because think of all the times that you came like this close to giving up on one channel or another channel. <laughs> There's been a lot of times I've wanted to quit, but I I you know, have to think to myself, I can't quit on 
well, over 200,000 people now. <laughs> um, 50,000 on this channel. Yeah, so, but, you know, I can't give up on you guys like that. There's just um, no reason to stop doing what I'm doing because it's just helping others and, you know, others or people on around the world um, is really something special. Plus, from my point of view, how should I put this? Doing ASMR as well as eating shows, and, like, at the beginning, and she deleted a lot of these old videos a while ago, but she used to, like, only eat, like, she said, protein bars, maybe a peanut butter jelly sandwich, a banana. Apple, Starbucks. My typical lunch back then would be a protein bar, peanut butter jelly sandwich, an apple, and this piece of string cheese in a Starbucks. But it was just like that every day. And I would always have, like, snacks of protein bars or protein drinks. I don't do those anymore. I literally just, you know, enjoy eating what I want to. Your encouragement and, you know, suggestions and it helped her to you know, try to you know, eat things like a wider variety and not be so afraid of like, I have to eat absolutely healthy every single meal or I'm going to you know, lose control. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys. I just want you to know that. You've made a complete 180 and a person out of me, and I couldn't be in a better place in my life right now than where I am. I got a loving family. I got a very supportive husband. I have an amazing son. And I got an awesome community here of people I enjoy talking to every day and making videos for and making them feel better and happy. It's probably one of the, probably the best of times in my life, honestly. And I really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm crying. <laughs> Just a little bit myself. <laughs> uh, is she fully recovered from her eating disorder? Like, she may never have, like, a true full recovery in terms of, like, being able to you know, eat without, you know, concern, but she's managing to maintain a healthiness. And... She's been doing it for a long time and will continue doing it for a long time to come, I'm sure. I just hope I never step back on that path of death again because I don't think I will survive the next time. I gotta try to stay away from it no matter how hard it seems. It's very hard. And to almost die from something and, you know, be gone from... Or I would have been gone from my husband and my son's life. I'm just glad God gave me a second chance because I was going to die from that. That's what it was looking like. I don't know how I really even survived, you know? It was hard. But, um... <laughs> so, one last time. Thank you all. Thank you. And have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for watching this video. Um, we will see you guys next time. This is Crystal and Charles. And we love you.